watch some of our artisans at work decorating pieces in brightly colored patterns. Their skill and speed is dazzling. Much of the decoration is done with sponge painting. This particular technique began near the end of the 19th century. The artisans take natural sea sponges from the nearby Baltic Sea and hand cut their designs. And then they paint using the sponge to make the repetitive elements of the design. Many of the more complex designs cannot be done with sponge alone, and our decorators deftly switch between sponges and brushes. Many of the traditional decorations are rather simple. Over time, special designs were introduced called unicat, meaning unique, or signature. And these would bear the signature of the artist who designed them. Given more time, the range and complexity has just gotten larger and larger, and the bar keeps being raised in terms of just how much decoration goes into any one piece and the skill required to paint the design. The very first step is to design the shape and to make the molds. With molds of the right shape, the clay is inserted, local clay from the region, remember, and the mold absorbs the moisture from the clay while it's being fired in the kiln. After the pieces cool quite a bit, the molds are opened and they cool some more. When the pieces are removed from the mold, they need to be smooth because they must be a perfect canvas for the decoration. Then comes the elaborate hand painting. So finally, the piece is dipped in glaze. Don't worry, the design hasn't disappeared. When it's fired, this time, what looks opaque becomes a glass-like surface and the colors beneath take on their final form. That lavender-like color you see before firing, well, that becomes the deep cobalt blue, so common on Polish pottery. One of my friends in Bolesławie told me that the reason this color became so popular was that the porcelain is generally found in deep, beautiful blues and whites. Well, peasants wanted to have beautiful things, just like the rich people. And so, if porcelain was normally decorated with cobalt oxide, so too would be this earthenware. This pottery was the poor man's porcelain. The new designs that we at Unuala Volta are continuously introducing demonstrate that this art form is being brought to noble heights despite its once peasant origin. For me, this trip meant deeper relationships, not just with suppliers, but with friends, with people who share our values. They, like so many of our artisans, get such joy from knowing that the things they are producing with their hearts and with their hands will be treasured by others, some cherished and passed generation to generation. At Unuala Volta, celebrating the human spirit is central to all that we do.